Hey guys, welcome to um, another video. Not a chemistry with Harvey episode this time, although we are still doing chemistry. Today we're going to be acid etching and brass washing knife, bl uh, knife blades and tools. So here's some examples of some stuff I've done before. This is your standard Victorinox can opener. And this is the acid etched one that I, I have done before. So as you can see, um, it's a lot darker. In fact, it's pretty much black. And I don't know if you can make it out on camera, but actually it's got like gold flecks on it where it's been battered up. That's not just scratches, that's a kind of brassy, goldy colour. So it's quite a nice aesthetic for knives. And if you if you do it to every tool on a Sami knife, it can look really good. I'm currently building one like that at the moment. So uh, let's show you how to do that today. So what you're going to need, first of all, uh, here comes the chemistry part. You're going to need some ferric chloride. This is the bit that actually makes your acid solution. Um, you're going to need some acetone for, for washing your knife um, and cleaning it. You're going to need some nail polish to um, mark off areas of the knife that you don't want acid wash. So if you look at this piece, focus. If you look at this piece, I, I put the nail polish on the pivot joint so that it still moves freely because the acid etching makes the blade a bit more rough than the stainless steel. Um, you're going to need some wire to hang your blades with and obviously you're going to need, need your knife blade so today we're doing the Victorinox um, standard Swiss Army knife blade and obviously acid so goggles protect your eyes and gloves make sure your gloves don't dissolve in the acid um, because some gloves will these ones I've checked they don't they will protect your hands, but some gloves will dissolve in um, the acid solution we're going to make. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your knife and you're going to want to clean it. So you're going to put on your gloves, right? Because any, any sort of finger oils and um, I guess it is just oils from your hand, I don't know another name for them, that you get on the knife will affect the edge. So we're going to remove all the oils. We've, um, with the acetone. So we take the acetone and a towel and we add a dab of the acetone onto the towel like that. Make, make the towel nice and wet. Then we simply clean the knife with the towel like this. Clean off the blade, make sure there's no oil on it. Give it a nice polish like that. Make sure it's all clean. Get in the the, the nooks and crannies like that. Lovely, and then we're also gonna clean the pivot. Although you wanna dry the pivot afterwards because we're gonna now put nail polish on it. It's, it's better if you use a bright color, but I, I didn't have this. I only had this on hand. So you're gonna to wanna to paint off the moving sections of the knife. You can also paint the knife blade if you wanna put a cool effect on it. I've seen some people do um, like fi uh, paint fire streaks or their initials onto blades with this. But basically all moving parts you want to cover with this. And if you use a brightly coloured nail polish, it's a lot easier to see where you've already covered the coloured. And make sure you just get some in the hole there. Sorry it's out of focus, but get some in the hole there. Can you focus on that? So that um, the centre doesn't etch as well. While that dries, we're going to get to work on making our acid solution. So before we actually make the acid solution, let's go through the chemistry because, well, this is my channel, we like chemistry. Um, so ferric chloride is, is the acid base uh, we're using. Ferric chloride is a metal complex, FeCl3. So we're using the Fe3 plus ion here. And so to actually make the acid we're going to be using, we want to turn this into hydrochloric acid. So how do we do that? Well, as we learned from my previous Chemistry with Harvey video, if we put FeCl3 with water, we get um, the water ligands displace the chlorine ligands, and we get Fe. H2O, 3, 3 plus, plus C, 
L minus times three. But obviously, um, this isn't a stable ion, uh, a stable complex compared to this one, because this is now positive and this negative is gonna be attracted back to this positive. So what happens? Again, we learned about this in the last video. This is gonna be um, an acid-base reaction. So this, this complex here um, is neutralized or acts as an acid and donates its hydrogens to the chlorine to form hydrochloric acid. So we get Fe. And remember how um, you always lose as many hydrogens as there are um, charge on the iron, so we lose three hydrogens, so we get FeOH3, no water here anymore, and this is now a neutral molecule because the OH is, OH minus is negative, obviously, and we get our, and we get our Cl3 minus, uh, C, three Cl minus, sorry, and now we have our H plus ions floating around, three H plus ions, okay, so then we get our and these combine to give us our HCl. And this HCl is the acid that actually does the work etching it. And I'm not gonna go through the chemical equation of how this acid reacts with the steel, because I don't know it. Um, but that is a rough overview of how um, we make our HCl acid from the ferric chloride. And if we put that into one equation, we get FeCl3 plus 3H2O, goes to FeOH3. Oh, that three is not supposed to go there. It's supposed to go there. FeOH3 plus 3HCl. You can tell how many mi mistakes I make when drawing out these videos that get edited out of the chemistry with hard videos just from watching all these scribbling outs. But yeah, so that's that's effectively what's happening in our chemical reaction. And so from this, we can tell we need one part ferric chloride and three parts water in our solution. So that's exactly what we're going to do. You take one part ferric chloride. Um, these solutions, unfortunately, they don't actually tell you the concentration of ferric chloride. On the back, it says contains ferric chloride, ferrous chloride and hydrochloric acid. Um, so... I just assumed it was 100% concentrated, so I put the water in excess, basically, because then we're going to make... Um, it's going to be a bit safer, because our HCl is going to be more dilute if we assume the water, if we assume this is 100%, because not all the water will be used up in the reaction. So our water will be in excess, so our HCl will be more diluted. It'll still work. It'll just work a bit slower, but it'll be less dangerous if we accidentally spill it on ourselves. So that's what I'm doing. So one part of this, three parts of water, and I've already mixed that up. Don't put it in a metal container because it will eat through the container. Here is my acid solution. This is my uh, ferric oh, goggles on now. This is my ferric chloride solution. So I don't know if you can see here, but actually as I've spilt this on my desktop, which is aluminium, there's bubbles forming. Um, I believe this is it releasing hydrogen because uh, um, in the hazard labels on the bottle, it says releases, not the hazard labels on the bottle, the bottle doesn't give you hardly any hazard labels. I looked up the hazard labels online and it said releases um, explosive hydrogen gas. So you've got to assume those bubbles are hydrogen. So also keep a window open, not because of the hydrogen, more because um, there's a chance that HCl gas will be released as well. So, and you don't want to breathe that in. So we're going to take our copper coil. It's better if you use string because the string probably won't dissolve in the acid as quickly as the copper, because copper's a metal. It's also worth having some tweezers on hand, um, in case you drop your knife into the acid, which I did last time. You have to fish it out. So, copper wire. I'm gonna bend this, like that. Do a little hook. Put our knife over the hook, like this. I'm going to take the other end, I'm going to grab a pencil. We are going to wrap this pencil around it, okay? And now this, we just drop into the acid and let it etch. 
we leave it for about 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Um, so I'll do like after, I'll, I'll do a little, um, some pictures of after 10, 20 seconds, etc. Okay, so um, I've taken it out for the final time. Um, it's been an hour now. As you can see, there's a copper coat on um, the knife. I think this is just uh, because I hang my blades off of copper wires, so maybe I won't do that in future um, because it gives this annoying coat which I've been having to wipe off after every 10 or so minutes. Um, so I'll just do that now, see if I can wipe that copper coat off of this blade. So yeah, as you can tell, um, once the copper coat's wiped off, it's really nice and black. Um, and the reason mine took so long is, first of all, because I didn't realise that the copper coat had to be wiped off, so it's just sat there with the copper absorbing all of the, um, the acid on the front, so it wasn't doing anything. And also because my solution has been used to do... Sorry, that's the timer for an hour. I did take it out a minute early. Alexa, stop. Um, my solution has been used to do many many knives already um i think i've done like three swiss army knives two swiss army knives two and a half yeah i didn't fully finish the other one um two and a half swiss army knives already so the solution is pretty dilute now um so yeah now one thing i should have mentioned at the start is you will also need bicarbonate of soda or baking soda solution to neutralize the acid and stop it from um reacting with the knife after you're done so just dip it in there Wash it about, make sure there's no acid left unneutralized on the blade, give it a dab off, and dry it off with the towel again. Um, so yeah, here's our before and after of this knife. This was a one before, nice and shiny, this is an after. Now what we're going to do is we're going to brass wash it. You can stone wash it if you don't have any brass, because brass is actually surprisingly hard to come by. Um, and so to brass wash it, we're going to take this knife, and you're going to get a container. And what I've done is I've filled it <coughs> with um, ammunition casings. Drop this in. Now I'm going to go add some water to this and I'll be back. So it's now got water in it. I'm going to put the lid on, although stupidly this container isn't actually watertight. So I'm now going to wrap it in a towel as well um, so that it doesn't splash all over me and just give it a right hard shake. So I've been shaking this for about five minutes now. Um, we're going to have a look at what the knife looks like. Let's uh, take this out. And as you can see, um, if you can actually see that, if it's focused, it is covered in nice sort of golden brass speckles. And that is exactly the look we were going for. Also, all of the copper that was remaining that hadn't been wiped off by the towels and haven't wiped off by that process. There's some patches missing the brass spots, like here I'd say it's a bit lacking. So I might just put it in for another 30 seconds, but it's turned out very well. So let's dry it off and we'll do a final comparison. Okay, so here's the final comparison. You can do this with any knife. All steels will do it. Um, some steels do it faster or better than others. But I, uh, I'm i very proud of how this, well, very happy with how this turned out. Been doing this for a few knives recently. So if you want to see what those knives look like when they're finished, I'm not just um, acid washing the blades on those Swiss Army knives, I'm changing out the scales, changing out the liners as well. I'm fully customising them for my dad's birthday present. Let's hope he doesn't watch this video. So yeah, that is um, how to acid and brush wash um, your knife blade. Um, thanks for watching. Oh, it's also, before I leave, it's worth noting this blade. It's now dull. It's a bit of both from the acid and um, the brass washing, so you're going to want to take an edge to that, uh, take a stone to that and sharpen it up again before you use it. But yeah, so yeah, thank you for watching, um, and I will see you in another video.